That's not on my end of things, but I'll make sure that you get them, okay? Okay, so let's have a look at this first question. Um, just as a reminder for anyone who got here a little bit late, um, if you are needing to ask a question or you're wanting to answer a question, just use the hands up emoji and I'll unmute you, but you're also welcome to post questions and notes in the chat and I'll keep track of that as well. Okay, if you're feeling completely lost by something, then remember you can always send Lucky a direct message and he will help you make sure you understand what's going on. Okay, so if we're having a look at a question like this, so generally in your exams, your paper one exams, specifically when we get to the algebra section, they'll always begin with these nice, easy sort of multiplication questions where you just have to do a little bit of distribution or a little bit of FOIL, depending on what the question is asking for here. In this particular question, the sneak attack, because remember when we're doing maths, we have to try and find what the different pitfalls are, where we're trying to set a trap for you. You want to avoid those traps. The trap in this question was that we needed to put a bracket around those two brackets of there, and we need to work that out separately. Okay, so on the left hand side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that negative two into that bracket. So I'm going to get negative two X minus two, and then I'm going to keep this negative, and I'm going to do all of that inside this big bracket. Now, when we have a binomial times a trinomial, the most important thing is just that we make sure everything is multiplied by everything. Okay, so we've got 2x times 3x squared, which is going to give us 6x cubed, because 2 times 3 is 6, x times x squared is x cubed. 2 times x, two, which is going to be 2x squared, because the x times the x is going to give us an x squared. 2x times negative 2 is going to give us negative 4x. Then we're going to have 1 times 3x squared, which is positive 3x squared, 1 times x, which is x, and then 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. Okay, and we're keeping all of that inside this bracket. Now, at this point, you could distribute this negative if you wanted to, but the thing that makes it a little bit easier for us to do is to first simplify inside this bracket and see where our like terms are. So we've got a 2x squared over there and a 3x squared over there. And we've got a negative 4x and a positive x. And so when I start simplifying this, I'm going to have negative 2x minus 2 minus, open up that bracket. Let's check everything that we need inside that bracket. We've got 6x cubed, okay? 2x squared plus 3x squared, which is going to give us 5x squared. We've got negative 4x plus x, which is negative 3x, and then we've got our minus 2, and we can close that off. Okay, cool. Next step, we're going to bring in this negative outside the bracket, and we're going to multiply it into everything. So we're going to say that negative into all of these terms. So we've got negative 2x minus 2 minus 6x cubed, minus 5x squared, plus 3x, plus 2. Last step, all we have to do is we have to add our like terms. So I've got a negative 2x and I've got a 3x over there. I've got a negative 2 and a positive 2. And so my final answer is going to be negative 6x cubed minus 5x squared, then I've got negative 2x plus 3x, which is going to give us plus x, and the negative 2 plus 2 cancels out, and so that would be our final answer. This question was out of four marks, so the way that these marks would have worked is you would have gotten one for distributing that correctly, one for multiplying out all of your numbers inside that bracket, one for multiplying in this negative, so basically this distribution step, and then one for your final answer. How did this question go? Give me a number on the scale of zero to 10, how you found this question. If you made any mistakes, let me know where you made a mistake, and if you can see why you made that mistake, tell me how this question went. Talk to me. Okay, great. Lana, that's awesome. 
those of you who made small silly mistakes, can you try and identify where you made a mistake and so that you know not to make it in the future? Where did we go sideways? I suspect a lot of people may have made a mistake right in this beginning step by not bracketing. Yeah, that big bracket, it's, it's very important. <laughs> so remember, remember when we went through algebra together as a group and we said the first thing we want to do is we want to identify our terms, right? So if we identified our terms, those would be our terms. And so that step does help because it kind of shows you, okay, well, I need to do all of this as one thing first. So if identifying your terms first helps, then definitely go about that and see, see how it goes. Okay. Also, just as a reminder, if there's any questions we don't land up getting through today, they, you will be sent a memo for these questions that you were sent. So everything will be given to you. We're just going to see how much we can get through. Hopefully we can get through a bunch though. Okay, everybody's favorite types of questions, exponents. <laughs> Yay. What, who, who thinks that they can tell me what we do in a situation like this where this entire bracket so if you multiply that negative in the beginning, you would just need to make sure that you had a plus and then a negative 2x minus 1. Then it would have been okay. Okay. Yeah, because most of them tend to forget the plus, eh? Exactly. And then things go sideways and then that negative 1 gets multiplied into everything instead of everything else. And Nabentia, are you going to tell me what I'm going to do with this exponent situation? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot to have to unmute you. There you go. Uh, no, what I would do is that I would basically multiply it out. So I would get 2 to the power of negative 1, um, and then A to the power of negative 1, and then C to the power of negative 3. That's a great start. Let's try that. So we can also, because the whole bracket is to negative 1, we can actually move everything down right in the beginning. But we can absolutely multiply everything in first. Okay. So... The thing, Siobongo, the thing with like terms in this situation is because we're multiplying, our like terms don't really affect us. They're not, they're not a big issue for us. But if we look at these separately, what we can do is we can multiply those exponents in so that everything just have, has an exponent and then we can start moving things around. Okay, so if we have a look here, I could multiply that negative one into everything. So I would have two to the negative one, a to the negative one, c to the negative three, times two to the power of two, a to the power of six, because remember you multiply exponents when they go in. All over two to the negative two, a to the two, c to the zero. Okay, now at this point, there are two things that I am curious about. The first thing I'm curious about is what do we do with the c to the zero? The second thing I'm curious about is what do we do with the negative exponents? Those are my two questions to you. Sia, tell me one of my answers. Um, hi, ma'am. Hi. Um, for the c to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is why? Good. Anything to power of zero oh, is one. Awesome. Sia, while you're online, can you tell me what to do with my negative exponents? Oh, my mom, they are confused me. Okay. <laughs> I will hand over the mic to Nabentia then. Oh, no, wait. Where, where did his hand go? He disappeared. Nabentia, where did he go? <laughs> yeah. As I start asking about negative exponents, his hand disappeared on me. Who thinks they can tell me what to do with these negative exponents? Guys, I know some of you must know. You've got to try and go right into the back of your heads. What do we do with negative exponents? Think about this. If I have, oh, okay, Canva, yeah. Oh, so that your line's quite um, jumpy, so I'm not hearing a full sentence. But I'm seeing some great answers in the chat here. Move it up. That one I really like. Okay. Basically, when we have a negative exponent, we just swap them around. Okay. So if you get a highlighter or some sort of color, it's very helpful if you have some sort of color. A good step to do here, exactly, tell me you're going to switch them, is highlight all of the ones that have a negative exponent. 
So anything that has a negative exponent, highlight it. It's just like a silly thing, but it really helps. And then everything that is highlighted, we're going to move. So basically, if it's at the bottom, like this one's at the bottom, he's going to move to the top. And if this one's at the top, he's going to move to the bottom. So we just switch them around. And this c to the zero, that's just going to become one, which anything multiplied by one is itself. So we can now just ignore it. Okay. So let's start switching these around. So I'm going to keep my fraction. I'm going to move this two to the negative two up. So that now he becomes positive. I'm going to move this two to the negative one down. I'm going to move this a to the negative one down. I'm going to move the c to the negative three down. So now all of those have been moved down. Now everything that needed to move has been moved. So now I can just write the other things that were still left in my expression. So now what I have left is I've got this two squared, which is going to stay where he is, this a to the six, which is going to stay where he is, and this a squared, which is going to stay where he is. Okay, so that's our first step is we want to get all of our negative exponents, we want to make them positive. Okay. Cool. Now we have another step to do over here. Who has a suggestion of where we can go to from here? What can we do now? In the bank here, yes. Tell me what I can do now. Um, um, I think you would um, multiply out or basically multiply the ones with the exponents. So 2 to the power of 2 would become 4. Right, so you'd have 4 times four. 4 times 8 to the power of 6. Okay. So we have a two, the 2 to the power of 4 over 8 to the power of 6. And then at the bottom, we're going to have 2. And then we're going to have A to the power of 3, C to the power of 3. Okay. But we can simplify this a little bit more because we've got two to the power of four at the top and then we've got two at the bottom. You could have also made this, if you wanted to, you could have made that 16. So two to the power of four is 16. You could also have done that, okay? And then we have one last step that we have to do from here. So at the moment, you've got this fraction that you're dealing with. You've got 16a to the six over two a to the three c to the three. How am I going to finish this off now? What am I going to do to finish off this question? Try and think about what your numbers will be and then think about what your variables would be. Yeah, in the bank, finish this question off for me. Um, um, I think with the a to the power of six and a to the power of three, they would sort of cancel out. So on the top, you'd have a to the power of three. Good. Um, and then with the 16, that would become eight. So Good. Eight, eight, eight to the power of three on the top and then at the bottom you add over c cubed beautiful beautifully answered well done okay so the 16 came from having basically up here i've got let me use a different color so it's not confusing up here i've got two to the power of two times two to the power of two so that's saying four times four which is 16 that's how that guy came into play but remember you can just use your calculator to help you with those as well and then when we simplified here, we said, well, 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. 8 to the power of 6 over 8 to the power of 3 gives me 8 to the power of 3. And then at the bottom, I've got my c to the power of 3. And that would be this whole question. Does anyone have any questions about this before I move on? Let me know. <laughs> sure. How can I help? Oh, I, I can see that you're trying to talk, but I'm not hearing anything. Um, is your mic connected? I don't think the mic is connected. Um, please log out and log in again, then select join with audio. He's definitely joined with audio because he's got the mic, but he I can't hear him speaking. Yeah, he's got the mic. It's okay, Tebo. Don't worry, these will all be recorded, so you'll get it now. now. Okay, I'm going to carry on talking, and then if your question comes, if we land up hearing you just now, then I'll, I'll scroll back here, okay? Okay, so those are just like some, some of the basic sort of starting questions that we would be dealing with here. So the first one we looked at, 
it's just a distribution situation and then a binomial times a trinomial. You are likely to see both of those because the binomial times tr trinomial is new to grade 10, okay? And then exponent work, they love exponent work, so you are likely to see something to do with exponents. So that's just dealing with the first two questions. I'm only trying to do one of each type of question you could be given in these situations. Okay, factorization. Now, when we do factorization, we want to think about the list of factorization. Who thinks that they can tell me what my different steps are? They're things that we've spoken about a lot in our classes. What are the things, sort of the hierarchy of factorization? What's the first thing we do look for? What's the second thing we look for? What's the third thing we look for? Tell me some of the things that we look for when it comes to factorization. What is the very, very, very first thing that we look at? Highest common factor. Yes, guys, common factors. Highest common factor. Great, great. Okay. Cool. Highest common factor. What is the second thing we look for? Dots. Yes, dots. Okay. And that is difference of two squares. Okay. Excellent. What is the third thing we look for? Trinomials. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Now in grade 10, we've also brought in grouping. Okay, so this is like the hierarchy of factorization that we focus on. The other thing that's really useful with factorization is the number of marks that they give us. That sort of gives us an indication of where we're going with the question. So let's have a look at this first question. We've got 6x squared y plus 12xy. So let's go through our hierarchy. Can I take out a highest common factor? And if I can take out a highest common factor, what am I going to take out? Good, I'm going to take out 6xy. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. If I take out 6xy, what is going to be left inside my brackets? What is going to be left inside my brackets? Good. I'm going to have x in my first term. And then in my second term, I'm going to just have a 2. Glorious. So in this question, it is out of two marks. So you would have gotten one, two. Uh, guys, don't panic about getting screenshots of these. I'll make sure that this gets sent to you with the memo. Okay. So please don't panic. Just try and focus on the question that we're working on. Cool. Okay. So that was our first jump back into factorization. We haven't looked at factorization for a while. Hopefully it felt like it went okay. I'm hoping we had some good things going on here. We will see as we move along. Okay. But that was an example of taking out a highest common factor. Cool. Let's see what happens in 2.2. Now, 2.2, the thing that I want you to focus on here is this. It's out of three marks. Now, because it's out of three marks, it definitely means it can't just be one step. Okay, so suggestions. I'm open to suggestions. What is the thing? What am I going to do here? Who's going to talk me through this question? What do I do with this question? I've got 5a squared minus 5. Canva, let's try again. See if I can hear you better this time. How can I, how am I going to do this? Can you hear me so, now? Yes, oh, I can sort of hear you now. Yeah. Oh, so you take out the common factor of 5. Excellent. And what will be in my bracket? Then you left with a two, a to the power of two minus one. Excellent. Next step. Nice. Then, then you do the sum of two squares. Then you say a minus one and a plus one. Yes, excellent. Well done. Well done. Nice job. Well done, Beautiful. Okay, so now what often happens in a question like this is that people take out this first step. So they take out the five and they left with the a squared minus one. And they're like, okay, cool, I factorized. And that is why the mark allocation is so important in factorization because there's no ways we will get three marks just for taking out a highest common factor. And so those three marks are telling us we must have another step. And that another step in this case was dots. And then make here, was your hand up to answer or was it up to ask a question? Oh, no, that's the answer, ma'am. That's fine. Uh, okay, no problem. <laughs> okay. Cool. Nice job, guys. Nice. Now a yucky one. 
a grade 10 trinomial question. Let's see how this goes. Give it your best efforts. Think about what it's going to look like. Think about how we break things up. Remember five is a prime number. So that prime number is telling us that we can only use a five and a one, which is helpful. So if we're doing our crisscross, we know we're going to have a five and we're going to have a one. We also know that because that's positive and that's positive, they're both going to be positives, which help us. Uh, where did we get the one on the first step? This one over here. That one is just, so these, these numbers that we work out, let me just get a different color going on. These numbers that over here, when I multiply them, I need to get this number. So five times one gives me five. And then these numbers, when I multiply them, I need to get this one. So this needs to give me six X squared when I multiply those together. Okay, in the bank here, talk us through. Um, ma'am, so basically what I did was, um, I, uh, since I had 6x squared, I put 2x and 3x into brackets. So I ended up getting 2x plus 5 in brackets times 3x plus 1. Nice, beautiful, excellent. So in this case, we need to break up the 6x squared. So we could have 6x and 1x, or we could have 2x and 3x. So in the bag, they broke it up as 2x and 3x. Let's multiply it out and see that it works. Remember, we multiply diagonally, okay? And so, and these questions, remember, these just take practice. They, I promise they get easier and quicker over time. So 2x times 1 is going to give us 2x. And 3x times 5 is going to give us 15x. And 15x plus 2x gives us 17x, which is what we want it to be. So we are happy bunnies. And remember, this is one bracket and this is one bracket. And so our brackets are going to be 2x plus 5, 3x plus 1. And we're done. And that is our grade 10 trinomial question. And the good news is for those of you who really just don't get this and are like, oh no, I hate these. Remember, it's never going to be a huge number of marks. It's only two marks here, so don't panic. How is it not 17x squared? Okay, so because when we're multiplying these, we're saying 2x times 1, and there's only 1x involved, so we just have 1x. And here we're saying 3x times 5, which is just 1x. And when we're adding like terms, our x's stay the same. So if I have x times x, then that's going to be x squared, but x plus x is just going to be 2x. So just a little reminder for algebra. You're most welcome. Remember, guys, this learn, learning time um, exam prep, it's for you. So you must ask as many questions as you want. Just ask away. If there's something you don't understand, just ask for it. Um, and if there's something you want to know more of, ask. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this one. Now, this one looks like something a bit new that we learned in grade 10. Definitely didn't know how to do this last year. Okay, let's try and go through our list of things and see if we can figure out what this is going to be. So I'm going to write docs and I'm going to write socks. You'll see why now. Okay, so those are the things that we have to look at when we're going through factorization. So highest common factor in this question, do I have anything that is common between 8x cubed and 27y to the 6? Do I have anything that's common? Canva, yeah. You can cube both numbers. Good, excellent, excellent. I can cube both numbers. I can't, so I have no highest common factor. Okay, I can't do difference of two squares because the D for dots stands for difference and that is a plus sign. So I definitely can't do dots. 
Okay. And socks is just a short word that we used to write um, with my kids, which is like, basically, it's a sum and difference of cubes. Okay. But I couldn't think of a word where it was sum and difference of cubes. So I just used to write socks because it's easy to remember. Okay. And so in this situation, what I've got is I've got a sum of cubes. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. When we do a sum of cubes for our first bracket, I'm trying to give myself a bit more space, is we cube root both of these terms. And so in here, the cube root of 8x cubed is going to be 2x. And the cube root of 27y to the 6 is going to be 3y squared. So we cube root both to get these first two numbers. Okay. Then we take this number and we square it. So we say, what is 2x squared? Which is going to give us 4x squared. Then we look at this number. And we square it. So we say, what is 3y squared squared? That's going to give us 9y to the 4. And then on the inside, whatever this sign is, we're going to have the opposite sign. So if it's a plus sign, we're going to have a minus sign. This sign is always going to be a positive. And then we just write the product of those two numbers. So we've got 2 times 3, which is 6x y squared. So I know that this looks a little bit confusing, but this is just the product. I can't seem to spell today. Product of first two terms. Okay, so basically it's saying 2x times 3y squared, and it's always going to be the opposite sign. Okay. Mandy, how can I help? Ma'am? Yeah. Um, how did you get the minus 6xy squared? So that's always going to be, so the sign is always going to be whatever's opposite the sign from the first bracket. And then we multiply these two together. So we say, what is 2x? And we multiply it by 3y squared. And that's going to give us that middle term. Oh, okay, thank you, ma'am. No problem. Okay, does anyone else have any questions about what they are currently seeing on the board? Let me know. Ask away. Yes. How can I help? Oh, disappeared. Okay. Oh, oh there you are. Hi, Hello. Hi. Uh, Ma'am, where did we get the, pos the plus sign by the 9y? Yeah, that's a good question. This is always, always, always a plus sign. Oh, okay. Thank so, you, ma'am. Yeah, so this sign is always going to be different to this one, and this one is always going to be positive. Okay, thank you, ma'am. No problem. Okay, any other questions about what you're currently seeing? Cool. Oh, yeah, Georgia, all yours. Um, how would you be able to like identify that it's going to be a sum of different cues? Like if it was in a test, for example, like let's say we don't know the difference between highest common factor and sum of difference of cubes. Okay, so with highest common factor, there has to be something that we can take out. So there isn't any number which is common between 8 and 27. There's nothing that I could divide into both of them. So I can't take out a highest common factor. Then I'd have to say there are two terms, okay? And when there are two terms, generally my options are highest common factor or difference of two squares or the sum and difference of cubes. Those are my options if I've got two terms, okay? We can see it isn't a highest common factor because there isn't anything I can take out of both of them, okay? It's not allowed to be difference of two squares because it's a plus sign. And so then we have to think, well, then it must be sum and difference of cubes. That's my last possible option. And so then check, can I cube everything? And if you can cube everything, then it would be a sum and difference of cubes. 
So if you sort of keep that list next to you as you're going, like highest common factor, dots and socks, trinomial, it sort of helps you as you work through them. Yes, how can I help? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Ma'am, you see when we have um, socks, mm. the, let's say we have 27, y to the power of 6. Do you divide that 6 by 3 every time? Yes, to get to, for Thank cubing you. it, for cubing it, that's what we would do to get that to. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, no problem. Cool. I feel like people are awake now, which is great. Now we're asking questions, which is good. Okay, let's try this guy. So now let's think, I know that this list is going to get irritating, but remember the more we see things, the more it will help. Okay, highest common factor, dots and socks. Three, trinomial, four, grouping. Okay, so when we think about it like this, the useful thing that's here that can help us is that, oh, I thought I was on a highlighter. Um, when I'm here for two, that's two terms. When I'm on number three, that's three terms. When I'm on number four, that's four terms. Okay, so if we think about this list, that's also, it also helps us. Now, in this question, I have got four terms. So I'm going to be able to do grouping of some kind. Now, grouping means that we are going to join some of them together. And then we're going to see either we can do it with difference of two squares or we can do it with a highest common factor. But we look at two terms and two terms. Sometimes we look at three terms and one term. But we'll see that when we get there. Okay. So basically what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to take something out where we land up with a what we, our aim is to get a common bracket of some kind that we can then take out. Okay, so Canva's suggestion here is to take out PT and then we would have P minus T. Okay, we'd have to do something before getting to that step. Let's try and break this up sort of step by step. What could I do to those two terms and what could I do to those two terms? So let's first, let's just look at my yellow one first. What could I do to those yellow two terms? How could I factorize them? Yeah, in the bank layer, how can I factorize those first two terms? Oh, um, um, uh, what I would have done is just sort of move them. So made it P squared plus PX minus T squared minus XT. Okay, if you move them, okay, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay, and then you would have moved the minus t squared minus xt. So now this is kind of forcing your hand to say that you would on this point have to take out p as a common factor. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then on this side, it would be forcing your hand to take out t as a common factor. Yes, now the problem with that is that this bracket and this bracket aren't the same as each other. But then ma'am, there I would have p minus t in a bracket and then I would have P plus T plus X in the second bracket. We can't. We, we can't add those. We can't, we can't, at this point, there's nothing we can take out. There's nothing that they have in common. Okay. So, yeah, so a, Kamba, this, when you yeah. see, look at the... Sorry, sorry, this, Jenny. No, no, so, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, Kamba, when you look at the first two, the P squared minus T, you cannot factorize PT there because they are not common. So the first one, P squared, does not have T in it. And the second one, T squared, does not have P in it. So you can't take out PT because PT needs to be both in both of them. But in a bank layer, I'm glad that you made this sort of, you went this route because this often happens in a test situation. You link two together and they don't land up giving you a common bracket. And that's fine. When that happens, you just need to go back to the drawing board and link a different two. So now if I'm linking these two, I'm seeing some comments in the chat here. I could do difference of two squares, right? So I could do P plus T, P plus T. And then if I look at these two terms, I can take out a highest common factor of X. And I'd be left with P minus T. Sorry, that should be a minus. Yeah. So yeah. now when I get to this point over here, it's great because I have a highest common bracket. I've got P minus T, which is common in both of my terms. And once I have something that's common in both, 
I can take it out as my highest common bracket, and then I just write with what we are left over there. So independently, although you're getting to a similar place there, the problem is that because your method before is incorrect, because you're taking out something which isn't common, they land up calling it, in maths it's called a complete breakdown. So sometimes you get the right answer by doing something incorrect the step before. And as soon as you've done something that's mathematically incorrect, then the marker is forced to stop marking. So if you get to a point where you may have the right answer, which is great, and so you'll be like, okay, but I've got the answer, so it's awesome. The problem with maths is that the right answer doesn't mean you're going to get the question right. And I know that that's irritating and stupid, but it's because the process has to all follow. I hope that makes sense. I know it's irritating. Ah, oh, Sebo, excellent, well done. I'm so glad. Good work. Nice. Okay, cool. I know, I know it's tricky. Grouping can be hard. Grouping is tricky. Um, but remember, you are going to see a question with grouping in your exams because it's something new that you learned this year. So in grade 10, they will give you sort of one question of each thing that's new that you learned in grade 10. And grouping is one of those things you learned. So you will definitely see it. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to our next ones. So now we're moving on to so that all the questions that were in question three are um, sort of expressions where we're working from. Oh, hold on, let me just answer this question here. This, this yellow part over here, this came from doing difference of two squares with those two. That's where those two came from. And then this one, we took out a highest common factor. Okay. okay, so these questions are looking at expressions, which we have to simplify. Now, when we simplify things is we basically our goal is to try and cancel things as much as possible. All right. And when we're dealing with a situation like this, where we've got exponents, the easiest thing to start with is to break it down into sort of separate sets. So if I'm wanting to break down what I'm seeing up here, I've got the 7x and then 7x plus 1 as my exponent. I can break that up as 7 to the power of x times 7 to the power of 1. And then I'm going to say minus 7 to the power of x times 7 to the power of negative 1. And that's all over 7 to the power of x. Now, my problem here is... I'm not actually going to tell you what my problem is. I want you to tell me what you think you would do in this next step. And I'm hoping some of you tell me what I think you're going to tell me, which means you've fallen for my trap. So what do you think we would do in this next step at this point, if this is where we got to? I'm open to suggestions. Where do you think we would go? Kampa, that was the right answer. That wasn't falling in my trap at all. Ah, thank you. Okay, okay. I have someone who fell into my trap. I'm grateful. I, I hope more of you fell into my trap, not because I want you to fall into my trap, but because I don't want you to fall into my trap in your exams. Okay. A lot of people's instinct in this situation is to cancel out the seven to the X's, is to cancel out these guys. Okay, that's sort of a general instinct. Oh, well, I must cancel all of those out. Oh, <laughs> you almost fell for my trap. Okay. You see, oh, yay. I'm glad people have fallen for it. So now the thing is that we can't do that. And the reason we're not allowed to do that is because you cannot, you can't cancel across terms. It's like a fundamental maths law. You can't cancel across terms. So we can't cancel things when we've got two things up here. I've got two terms going on. I'm not allowed to cancel things where I've got two terms going on. So this is another situation where you might get the right answer, but you may have gone the wrong way about getting there. Okay. So I can't cancel because I've got two terms going on at the top. So we are going to do exactly what Canvas suggested over there, and we are going to take ourselves out a highest common factor. You see, in grade 10, everything starts mushing together. We like to see, oh, exponents and factorization. We can mush those into one thing. And in grade 11, we take exponents and we take trig and we take equations and we mix all of those together. 
So as you get into the higher grades, we start mixing more and more of your sections into one question. So we are going to take out 7 to the power of x as our highest common factor. So I'm going to be left with 7 to the power of x. And inside my bracket, I'm going to have 7 minus 7 to the negative 1. And all of that is over 7 to the x. Now, at the top, I have one term. And because I have one term now, I'm allowed to cancel. So I can say that can cancel with that. Okay, and so now I'm left with 7 minus 7 to the negative 1. Okay, so 7 minus 1 over 7. That's what that means. You can chuck that straight into your calculator. And you should get 48 over 7. But chuck it into your calculator to make sure that I haven't made a mistake. I could have made a mistake. See if you end up getting the same answer as me. Make sure you're all happy. If there's anyone who's unhappy with the step here, let me know. Okay. I'm taking the silence that we're not we're not unhappy at the moment. I'm hoping. Oh, you got it right. That's awesome. Well done. Nice job. Siamo's really on fire, eh? Hey? Yeah, doing super well. Um, Lindelo, the me, I'm not sure what that me is, is telling me. Yes, okay. So the seven, seven minus seven to the um, negative one, seven to the negative one is one over seven. They mean the same thing because it's a negative exponent. So I've moved it down. Okay, so all we did here was our first step is we took out our highest common factor. So we took out our 7 to the x, which means we were left with 7 and 7 to the negative 1. And that was over 7 to x. Our 7 to the x is cancelled. And so we were left with 7 minus 7 to the negative 1. And 7 to the negative 1 is the same as 7, 1 over 7. And we just chucked that into our calculator. Okay, how can I help? Let me know. Uh, ma'am? Yeah. Over there, by 7 minus 7 over 1, we divide or we do what? You just, you're just minusing. So you say seven, 7 minus 1 over 7. So you get that answer. You get the answer 48 over 7, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. All right. <laughs> We have got another fraction situation. What do we do in this situation? Oh, yay, well done. I'm, I'm hoping I have some people who fell for my trap here. Um, so in order to see if you fell for my trap, I would like to know, because remember when we are adding or if we're subtracting fractions, okay, we have to have a common denominator. We have to, it's part of our rules. So I would like to know what my common denominator is. What is my LCD? Tell me what my LCD is. Ooh, X minus one. Interesting. Some people are saying X. Also interesting. So far, I haven't seen the answer I'm looking for, if that helps. In the big clear, take me out of my misery. What is my LCD here? I think it's x times x plus one. Yes, excellent. Give you, you are just doing amazing work over there. Can I just say I'm incredibly proud of you right now. It is definitely going to be x in brackets, x plus one. Well, that is I'm what our LCD thing. is going to be. So our gut, our gut when we look at a question like this is we say it's obviously going to be x plus one because that x is that x. So our LCD must be x plus one, but they're not. They're not the same as each other. This is one term and this is one term. So if we need to have an LCD, they, are, they exist separately as separate entities. And so our LCD is going to be X and then in brackets, X plus one. But this is a very common trap that teachers love to set. So look out for it because it might be biting you in the bottom in your exams. 
Okay, so now that we have an LCD, so everything is going to be over x, x plus 1. Don't drop your denominator. That's super important. As soon as you drop your denominator, the marker will stop marking. And then we think in this first term, I have x, but I don't have the x plus 1. So I have to say I've got to multiply that by x plus 1. And in the second term, I have the x plus 1 and I don't have the x. So I have to multiply that x by x. That's what I'm doing. And so I land up with x plus 1 plus x squared all over x, x plus 1. Which gives me, let me just write it like this. I'm going to multiply that out. You don't have to, but I'm going to multiply that out. Okay, tell me where I lost you. I lost you at the second stage. Okay, so all we did in the second stage is we multiplied it by what it didn't have. So this one had the x, it had that, which means I needed to multiply my top number by that, because that's what it didn't have. And then I did the same thing for my second term. So in my second term, it had the x plus 1, but it didn't have the x. So we needed to multiply this, this x. This is the same x. That's that x. We needed to multiply it by the x. That was in my LCD. That's what we did in this first step. Okay. And then we just kept our LCD. Yes, you keep your denominator. You keep that denominator the whole time. Okay, third step. All I did in my third step was I multiplied this 1 in. So I said 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is 1. x times x is x squared. And I kept my LCD. Okay? Then I just rearranged it. So then I've done nothing. I just rearranged it. Okay. You don't have to. I was just making it look better. Now, at this point, the, your teachers wanted you to get to this point because they want you to make a mistake. Tell me what you think you want to do in this situation. What do you want to do? What do you see? And you're like, obviously, I should do that. Tell me what you can see. Okay, so we can't do dots because there's a plus sign down here. And at the top, we've got three. Ah, see ya, yes. Our instinct is to be like, we need to cross things out. Okay, we want to see well, what can we cross out. And we're going to be like, well, we can cross out that x squared and that x squared, and we can cross out that x and that x, and so our answer is 1. That is what our instinct wants us to do. But what did I tell you we can't do earlier? We can't do that because we are canceling across terms. We are not allowed to cancel across terms. I can't cancel that and that because at the top, oh, goodness, at the top, I've got three terms, and at the bottom, I've got two terms, and I'm canceling over terms. I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, so I'm definitely not allowed to cancel, even though that is our instinct. I know that that's our instinct, but you have to try and fight against your instinct. That's your teachers are trying to make you make a mistake. Then the next thing you're going to see is you're going to look at this and you're like, I can do a trinomial with the top, but you can't because it's not a trinomial. It would only be a trinomial if that was 2x. And so you leave it here. There is nothing more you can do. That is your final answer. And sometimes you have to realize that your answer is going to be unsatisfying and you're going to get something that you don't like, but it happens. It's one of the sad things about maths. In the bank here, yeah, tell me. Um, I'm on the top, we had x plus 1 plus x squared, so we rewrote it. And why did it become negative 1? Oh, no, I think I erased something when I was highlighting. It's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Um, and also, you don't even have to write the second step. You could have left it here, and that's totally fine. Exactly. Plus or minus 1 won't give you x. Yes, you can leave it at that second step. Nice job, guys. Cool. Good work. Okay, now we get to these monster questions. Now, this question is out of four marks, but you can get ones in your test which are out of much more. But some of this has already been done for you. 
These questions look terrifying when you see them, and I know that they look terrifying, but I don't want you to panic when you see questions like this. I want you to break them up into steps. So I want you to think, what can I do with that? Then think, what can I do with that? Then think, what can I do with that? What can I do with that? And there's nothing I can do for the last ones. Okay, so we do each one separately and work our way through it. So let's start with pink right at the top. What can I do if I'm trying to make this one term? So I'm trying to factorize. How can I factorize 3x minus 6? What can I do? Exactly, HCF. And what is my HCF? 3. Beautiful. So I'm going to have 3x minus 2. And you have just given yourself a mark. So by breaking this up into sections and not panicking, we're able to get more marks. Over our orange section. What can I do with my orange? Dots on fire. Yes. Okay. If I'm doing dots with that orange, what is it going to look like? So I'm doing dots with my orange. What does it look like? What are my two brackets going to be? So my, yeah, what are my two brackets going to be? Uh, 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. Excellent. Nice work. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to keep this... One the divide for the moment, but you could change it to a times and flip, but for the moment, I'm going to keep it. Okay. I'm going to keep that divide and I'm going to look at my yellow. Now my yellow, how am I going to factorize that yellow? What am I going to do? In the main clear, what am I going to do with my yellow? Um, you take out nine. Okay. And what's going to be left in my bracket? X minus two. Cool. And then while you're here, can you do my green for me? Uh, you take out three and you'll be left with three x minus two. Oh, three x no. minus. Sorry, mm. you take out three and you'll be left with two x minus one. There we go. Yeah. Well so okay. Nice. Okay. And then we're going to write our second step, which nothing changed. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's our first step. So now, if I was, I know that this said that it was out of four marks. I actually would have already given you one, two, three, four. So in my opinion, this would definitely be four marks already. Okay. Um, yes, we're going to do that now. So now the next step is we're wanting to have a look over here and we're wanting to change this divide and we want to change it into a time sign. Now, when we change it into a time sign, that's when we think about our little trick, KFC, we keep, we flip, we change. Okay, so I'm going to write this all out. I'm just going to quickly zoom it out. We've got 3x minus 2 over 2x minus 1. 2x plus 1, and then we're going to change this divide to a times. We keep the first fraction. We flip the second fraction. And we change the sign. Okay. Now, my question to you is how many terms are there in this entire expression? How many terms are there? How many terms are there in this expression? Yes, there is one term. And because there is one term, we are now allowed to cancel. When there is one term, we can cancel because we're not breaking any rules. Okay, so our x minus 2 cancels with our x minus 2. Our 2x minus 1 cancels with our 2x minus 1. Our 2x plus 1 cancels with our 2x plus 1. Our 3 and our 3 land up becoming 9, so that cancels with our 9. The x and the x cancel, and we're just left with 2 over 4, which can simplify down to 1 over 2. And now that whole question becomes a very satisfying answer of a half, which is lovely. 
So if I was giving marks, I would have given you one, two, three, four. I'd give you a mark for having a multiply there and for being able to flip those um, fractions and then one mark for the answer. So I actually would have given you six. I took these from past exams, but um, if I was marking this, it would have been a six mark question. Yeah, I would have given six marks as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the last part, all we're doing in the last part is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to use something different so that you can see the numbers. Okay. So, uh, wait, okay. I canceled this X minus two with that X minus two. They, they went away. Okay. I canceled this two X minus one with this X minus one. So they canceled. I took my 2x plus 1 and I cancelled it with that 2x plus 1. Let's just say that that's all we could see until we worked out from here. I would say 3 times 3 is 9. Okay. Well, we can also see that that x there is going to cancel with that x. Okay. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So let's say we got to that point over there. Okay. And then at the bottom, we're left with 9 times 4 and 9 times 4 is 36. And then if we simplify 9, 18 over 36, we would have had 1 over 2. So you can also jump straight from there to there, but if you couldn't see that the 3 and the 3 would cancel with the 9, you would be left with that half. So it's one term because everything is being multiplied, and there are brackets with everything, which brings everything together. Okay, you guys are doing really well. I'm very proud of you, especially since it's a Saturday. You're doing good work. Okay, my favorite section. I would, yeah, I would have given the six marks. Um, so then one there and then one for your answer. So if you did this at home and you gave yourself a mark, I would give this out of six if you were working through it. Okay, equations. Now the important thing with equations is we need to know what we're dealing with. So let's try and break this up a little bit. When we have a linear equation, we basically just want to isolate x to figure out what it is, okay? If we have a quadratic equation, we are going to want to factorize. And so if we want him to factorize, we want to move everything onto one side and make it equal to zero. Okay, so let's have a look at this first one. Is this first equation a linear equation or a quadratic equation? Is this linear? or is it quadratic? It's linear, excellent. How do we know that it's linear? How do we know that it's linear and not quadratic? This also links in with what we've been doing with graphs during the week. Canva, yes, how do we know that this is a linear equation? We need to isolate x. Good, we need to isolate x, and we know that it is linear because there's no power. Okay, we just have a simple x. So, I'm going to distribute my three on the side. So I'm gonna have three X plus 12 minus two is equal to two X plus one. We want to isolate X, which means we want our X's on one side and we want our numbers on the other side. So I'm gonna keep my three X here and I'm gonna move this two X over. So your sign's gonna change. I'm gonna keep my one and I'm gonna move my two and I'm gonna move my 12. 3x minus 2x just gives me 1x, and I have 3 minus 12, which gives me negative 9. And so that is my final answer. So you are sort of guaranteed to have one nice linear question, which is a good thing to be given. This was out of two marks, you would have gotten one for your distribution and then one for your answer for a question like this. Okay. Question 4.1.2. Is this linear? Or is this quadratic? So what am I going to do? Is this linear, linear or is it quadratic? It is quadratic. And we know it is quadratic because there's an x squared. The x squared means it is quadratic. Okay. If it's quadratic, we want it to be equal to zero. And then we want to factorize. In the Bentley, yes. We have in the Bentley. Oh, sorry. I thought you wanted, uh, wanted to ask if I could give the answer. Oh, yeah, you're welcome to give the answer. Uh, so, ma'am, I made, uh, I put in brackets x minus 2 and x plus 8 equals 0. So then it just become became x equals 2 or x equals negative 8. Okay, so we had x minus 2 and then we had x plus 8. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, now if you're struggling to see how to get to this point over here, 
it's a it's a normal um trinomial it's not a great 10 trinomial so if you want to you can just work with your factor pairs of 16 like we did in grade nine so we've got one and 16 two and eight four and four and we think how can we get to six okay and we think well we would have positive eight minus two will give us six. And that's how these brackets became these brackets. You're also welcome to do it your um, crisscross way where you would have an X and an X, and then we would have to think, how do we break up 16? That would be eight and negative two. And those would be your brackets. Okay, so you can think of it either way, whichever one you're comfortable with. Once we've got these two brackets, we just say therefore X minus two is zero or X plus eight is zero which means x is 2 or x is negative 8. Okay. Any questions so far with this linear and this quadratic? All right. <sighs> Yeah, Mandy, how can I help? Okay. Mandy? Yeah. Hello? Hi, yes. Um, yes, Mandy. Yes, ma'am. Going back to the um linear equation. Yeah. Um, what happened in the first step? So all, all we did in this first step over here was we yeah. took this three and we multiplied it into the bracket. So we said three times X, which gave us the three X and three times four, which gave us our 12. Otherwise, everything else stayed the same in that first step. No, I meant under that. Like, yeah. Oh, the, the step over here. Yes, yes, okay. So here, what I did was I moved things. So I wanted my X's to be on one side. And I wanted my numbers to be on the other. So I kept the three X on the side. And then because that two jumped over, he had to change signs. And then I did the same idea for the right-hand side. This one stayed put. And then I wanted to move those two over. And so they changed signs when they moved over. Oh, thank you, man. No problem. Okay. So now what we're looking at over here is we are looking at a fraction equation. And when we have a fraction equation, we start things sort of, it's like a, a mix of the last few things that we've been talking about. First of all, we want to kind of make this as simple as possible. Okay. So by making it as simple as possible, we want to think over here, is there something I can do to those two, which would, can make it a little bit simpler? Can someone tell me what they think we could do in that first step over there with it? Yeah, exactly. I can do difference of two squares. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep everything else exactly the same. And then I'm going to talk you through a couple of things that are, are given to you as little hints. So the first thing we knew we we're going to do is we're going to do difference of two squares. So I'm going to have x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay. Now, when you are in a question and you're given something that looks like that, where the number is before the variable. So here we've got two minus X. That's a warning bell. It's trying to give you a hint. So when we have the number and then minus X, it's trying to give you a hint. It's trying to say, this is a switcheroo. Okay. And if it's a switcheroo, all we do is we change the sign at the front and we switch around our things. So we changed the minus to a plus and we switched around those two terms at the bottom. Okay, so when we see the number minus a variable, our brain needs to think it's a switcheroo. Uh, the lesson ends at half past. So we've got 23 minutes. Okay, now when we get to this point over here, we are going to try and find ourselves a lowest common denominator, a, an LCD. Okay, so we've got x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2, and x plus 2. 
so guys, this, this class ends at half past four. So it runs from three until half past four. That was in the information you were given. But there will be recordings of this. So if you do land up having to leave for different reasons, you will receive this recording. Okay, so we're trying to find our LCD here. We've got all these different things at the bottom. Who thinks they can tell me what my LCD is going to be in this situation? Yes, guys, beautiful. Yes. It's going to be x plus 2, x minus 2. Great. Okay. So I'm going to do a step now where I keep it all over here and I keep my x plus 2, x minus 2. That's my LCD. Now we look at our top. So this 3x had both of them. So I don't need to multiply it by anything. This x only had x minus 2, which means it still needs x plus 2. And this x plus 1 only had x plus 2, which means it needs x minus 2. Okay. Now, only in a fraction equation, and that is what is so important with this, it has to be an equation. Okay, if it's not an equation like it was earlier, it was just an expression, we're not allowed to do this. But in an equation, we're allowed to drop the denominator. Only in an equation. Okay, so once we get to this point here, where we have a lowest common denominator across our whole equation, we're allowed to drop it. And it can go away. And we're just left with this. When we get to that point over there, we're just going to do some multiplication. Okay, so we're just going to keep our 3x. We're going to distribute that x in. So I'm going to have plus x squared plus 2x. And on this side, I'm going to do my FOIL. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times 1 is x. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Okay. We can try and move our x's onto one side and our numbers onto another and see what happens. So I'm going to keep my x squared here. I'm going to move this x squared over. So it's going to be minus x squared. I've got plus 3x on this side. I've got plus 2x on that side. I'm going to move that 2x over. And I'm going to move that x over. And that's going to be equal to negative 2. Now we just find our like terms. So I've got x squared and x squared. And I've got 3x, 2x, 2x, and 1. So x squared minus x squared, they cancel out. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 minus 1 is 6x. And that's equal to negative 2. And now often our instinct is to be like, oh, we should divide by negative 2, because then we would have a number. But you always divide by the number that's in front of x. So you always divide by the coefficient of x. And so those sixes are going to cancel and you're left with x is equal to negative 1 over 3. And that would be your final answer. So lots of things you have to do in a, in a question like this. So, so this took a huge amount of work. You were doing factorizing at first. The step up here was factorizing. Then you found an LCD. Then you distributed, so you multiplied things out. Then you found your like terms, and then you finally got your answer. So it was a lot of different steps. So it's like combining everything you've learned up until this point. Um, I mean, technically, you could leave it as negative 2 over 6, but it's always better to give it as its most simplified form. Some of your teachers will be really strict about that, so they might not even give you the, the answer, the mark. So this one is out of six. The reason they wouldn't give a question like this out of more than six is because if people um, make a mistake, they land up losing too many marks. So they would have been quite careful with where the marks were given. You would have gotten one for your dots over there, one for your switcheroo. You would have gotten one for distributing over there, one for the um, foil on the other side, you would have gotten one for getting to this point over here, the 6x equals negative 2, and then one for your final answer. 
those of you who are running out of data, I'm so sorry. I know that this is a long lesson. Um, just remember that there will be a video recording of it. So if I lose you, you will still be able to receive this and you'll be able to watch it. Okay. But before you disappear, those of you who are running out of data, before you disappear, next week, by the Thursday, you should be sent the notes and the questions that we're going to be doing next week, Saturday. Okay, so you'll get a similar pack to what you got last week. And if you didn't get notes, please remember to just stay on this call so I can make sure I have your names to make sure that you get them for this following week. But I really, really, really encourage you to do the questions before I meet you on Saturday because it will go so much better if you've done the question and then we just basically in this session, we're just talking through your answers and seeing where you made mistakes and seeing where you went right and wrong. Okay. So I really, really encourage you to do those questions. You'll get more from these sessions. I'm very glad you got the same answer as me. I'm very proud of you. These are tough questions. Um, let's keep, let's keep going. We've got 15 minutes left. Let's see what we can get through. And remember, you will be sent the memo to all of this as well. Okay, so what we have over here for five marks is we have an exponential equation. So we have an exponential equation. And when we're dealing with something like this, our first goal is to get everything down to its prime factors. Does everyone remember how we get to our prime factors um, with our calculators? Do we remember how to get to our prime factors? Soma, yes. And then basically, you type in the number 27 in the calculator, then you say equals Good. shift and fact. Yes, beautiful, well done. Okay, so we're gonna say 27 equals shift fact, and we will see that that 27 is three cubed. Okay, so what this lands up being, oh, I shouldn't have two equal signs, three cubed X, so three to the three X, times nine would be three squared. Let me do this in two steps. So this would become three cubed and that's to the power of X times three squared to the power of X minus two is equal to three squared. Okay, now we're gonna get this to look a different way. So I'm gonna say, well, that means that that's three to the three X. Now what's important for this next one is remember that this gets multiplied into both. It's a super important step. Okay, so that's three to the two X minus four is equal to three squared. Okay, we're now gonna do this sort of a similar way to how we did a question earlier and we're gonna break this dude up a little bit. So we're gonna keep this three to the three X and we're gonna break him up to three to the two X times three to the negative four, and that's equal to three squared. Okay. Now my question to you is one that I have asked a bunch today. How many terms do I have on this left-hand side? How many terms are there? Yes, there's one term. It's one term because I'm multiplying everything. And because I'm multiplying everything, I can now just work with the things that have the same bases and the same exponents. Okay, so because these both have a base of three, I'm allowed to just add my exponents. And so this just becomes three to the power of five X. That's what that yellow becomes. Let me just get rid of that part over there. This over here is going to become this over here. And then we've just got times three to the negative four is equal to three squared. Okay. If I'm wanting to isolate this, so I want this over here, I want this to be isolated. I want it to be all alone. How can I go about that? How can I isolate that three to the five X? How can I isolate it? At the moment, this dude is in my way. How do I move that dude to the other side? When he moves, what happens? Yes. What happens when I move that three to the negative four? Uh, 
was a decilia that's such a sneaky answer because it's like right but it's also yeah. wrong <laughs> exactly <laughs> you, you did change the sign because you have to make it from a times to a divide yeah okay good so we're dividing it so it changes so, its operation we're going to keep the 3 to the 5x and then we're going to divide this side by 3 to the negative 4. Now, the important thing is that negative 4 doesn't become positive 4. Exactly, Boucle, that's exactly what it becomes. Okay. So now, in this situation, we've got our 3 to the 5x on the left and we've got this 3 squared at the top over 3 to the negative 4 at the bottom. Tell me where I'm going to go to from there. Oh, so my keeps on like disappearing out of my grip. Just hands up and then disappears. <laughs> um, so when I'm at this point over here, oh, sorry. So it's not positive four because I haven't actually moved it. I've just divided it by that number, but I haven't moved it in any specific way. I know it's, it's messy because you're like, it's moved down. So obviously it's, it should be positive, but it's not. But at this point here, now, if you're wanting to move it up, if you want to move it up to become positive, you can. So now I have 3 to the 5x is equal to 3 squared times 3 to the 4. Just going to have to move over here. And so now I can add those together. So I've got 3 to the 5x is equal to 3 to the power of 6. And now all of that work just to get to this point, our bases are the same. And as soon as our bases are equal to each other, then our exponents are equal to each other. So because those threes are the same, I can now say, therefore, 5x is equal to 6, which means x is equal to 6 over 5. This was a mammoth question. Okay, it was out of five marks, which is a lot of marks. And it's because we had to do a whole bunch of different steps to get where we were wanting to go. So first step, think about it. This first step over here, we got everything to our prime factors. Then we just distributed that two in to get to that point over there. Then we broke this up to give us our three to the two X times three to the negative four. We grouped together our ones with our X's, okay? And we kept it over there. And then on our other side, we moved our four. Now you could have also done something different at this point over here. I'm just gonna like rapidly running out of space. Okay, at this point over here, you could have kept it as three to the five X minus four is equal to three squared. You could have kept it at that point over there. And then because our bases are the same as each other, you could have said five X minus four is equal to two, which means five X is equal to six, which means X is equal to six over five. Both of those are perfectly fine. So you could follow the green logic or at this point over here, you could have also moved into blue, depending on where you're at and how confident you're feeling with exponents. Um, no, Tuesday, guys, Tuesday and Thursday lessons are completely separate to the exam prep. So your Tuesday and Thursday lessons are our function work and that stays as our function work. It's as if this didn't happen for the people on Tuesdays and Thursdays because not everyone is in this. And this lesson is just today and next week, Saturday, and it's just focusing on exam work. Okay. Okay. 4.1.5. We have got a inequality okay now an inequality as long as our negative isn't on the one side we're actually fine so i'm going to start by moving my 3x onto that side and my 10 onto the other side why were you shocked that your answer was a fraction it's okay to have an answer as a fraction don't be scared of fractions actually <clears throat> with sorry guys it's like something stuck in my throat with these types of questions, they often like to have your answer as a fraction, because if it's a whole number, people just put in numbers into those X places until they get to the right answer. So they just do it by trial and error. And so to avoid that, they like to give you the answer as a fraction so that that wouldn't have been possible. So your teachers are smart. They know what you're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to move that 10 over. So I'm going to say 10, 2 minus 10 on that side. And then on the other side, I'm going to have x plus 3x. 
So 2 minus 10 gives me negative 8, and that needs to be greater than 4x. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and so I get negative 2 has to be greater than x. Now, if you did not do it that way, if you did it this way, if you moved your x over, okay, you would have gotten negative 4x needs to be greater than 8. And now when you divide by a negative, you have to change the sign. So in an inequality, okay, and when I say inequality, it just means we have greater than or less than signs, okay. When you divide by a negative, you have to switch the sign. So I'm dividing by negative 4 here, so I have to switch my sign. Negative 4 divided by negative 4, they cancel, so I'm just left with x, and then that needs to be less than 8. Lunga, where are you struggling with this question? So just think of it as like a normal linear equation, except instead of an equal sign, we have a greater than sign. That might make it a bit easier to think of. Sia, how can I help? I'm, 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 you did two sums, so was the one on the right an example? Oh, sorry. This should have been divided by negative four, which is negative two. No, they're exactly the same. Oh, okay. <coughs> in, the, in the test, ma'am, when they ask us to, when they give us a sum like this, will they make us like write it on a number line? Sometimes. Sometimes they will. So if we had to write this on a number line, we're saying that x has to be smaller than negative 2. I've done a terrible number line here. 0, negative 2, negative 4. Let's do it like that. So x has to be smaller than negative 2. It's not allowed to be equal to negative 2, so it's going to be an open circle, and it has to be less than negative 2. So it's going to be an open circle if it's greater than or less than, and it's going to be a closed circle if the equal sign is involved. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. No problem. Okay, so Lunga, the first step, all I did in the first step was I moved my 10 over. So I said 2 minus 10, and I moved my 3x over. So I said x plus 3x. I just moved them across the sign. And when they move across the sign, then our sign changes. That's all I did in that first step. And then I just simplified from there. Okay, I'm going to try and see if we can get through one last question. I know our time is disappearing rapidly, but let's just try to do this one last one for today. And then the questions that we didn't end up getting through, um, which is a couple, um, you, the, you will be sent the memo from. So you will be able to have a look through the memo. And I'll also just write it in sort of in my in handwriting on here as well. Okay. Now this step here, we have another fraction equation, okay? We are trying to isolate that guy over there. So what is the first thing that we need to do? And remember when we have three parts to an inequality, we have to do the same thing to all three. What is the first thing we have to do if our aim is to isolate that blue negative 2x? What's my first thing? Multiply by four. Good. Okay. That four is in my way. So if I do all of this, I'm multiplying all of them by four. Now, when I multiply this side by four, my four is just canceled. That's why I didn't land up with a denominator. Okay. So a negative two times four is going to give me negative eight. Two minus two X. Three times four is going to give me 12. Okay. What's the next thing? Remember, we're trying to isolate this guy. What's the next thing that's in our way in that middle section that I need to move? The two. Good. Okay. And at the moment, it's a plus two. So if I was moving it, remember, it's sign's going to change. So I'm going to minus two from that side. And I'm going to minus two from that side. Okay. So I land up with negative 10, negative 2x. 10. Last step. I'm trying to isolate this x now. How do I get that x to be alone? What do I have to do?
divide by negative two. Now we are in an inequality and we have just divided by a negative. When we divide by a negative, what do we have to do if we divide by a negative? Change the signs exactly. Okay. So because we've divided by a negative, we have to change our signs. So negative two divided by negative 10 divided by negative two gives me positive five. I'm changing my sign. These two cancel. So I just have my X and I change my sign again. 10 divided by negative two is negative five. When we get to this point, it is better to write it where your negative number is at the beginning, but you will still get the right answer for just writing what I have in that block over there. Nice work. Guys, that sadly brings us to the end of our hour and a half. <laughs> I can't believe how quickly that time went. Um, just another reminder to please try the questions that you are sent next week before our session on Saturday so that you have given them a go. And so then this is sort of you just um, figuring out where you went right and you went wrong. Those of you who did do the questions, I think you would have seen that you got a lot more from this lesson, which is great. Um, the best thing with maths is to do practice and learn from those mistakes. So I really recommend that you do that. Um, the other thing is that uh, obviously to try and fit in as much as possible in this time to help you as much as possible, I have to go through them quite quickly. So if you write through them, then you should be okay. Sia, so yeah, I think the memo is going to be sent to you soon. So hopefully you'll um, also, you should have gotten my notes on simultaneous equations. If you did not get the notes and the past paper questions, please, can you write your full name in the chat for me right now um, so that I can send it forward to those people who need to know in order to get the, the notes. So if you did not receive the notes and the questions, please, can you write your full names in the chat to me right now? And I will make sure that that does not happen to you on Saturday and that you are sent everything that you should have been sent. Um, by Thursday. Thanks, guys. Okay, in the bank, how can I help? I just want to ask, the answer was five uh, is greater than X and X is greater than negative five, right? The one in the square, not the one below that. Yes. Okay, thank you. So X is greater than negative five and X is less than five. Is that what you said? Oh, now I've lost you again. I think it's because you were on mute. Hold on. Let me just unmute you quickly. So, yeah, sorry, I'm, did you say X is greater than negative five and X is, X is less than five? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, that's fine. Then. Okay. Um, no problem. Zandasile, how can I help? Oh, ma'am, I received the notes. They were sent by email. Not uh, Okay, so you did get them. Okay, yes, good. Yes, I did. Okay, Thank excellent. You. Um, okay, guys, so those of you who've sent your names, I'm going to send them through. I'm hoping um, that it wasn't like a crazy mistake that happened. But um, yeah, um, I'll just double check for all of you. But please, can you get your parents to try and check your emails in case somehow it landed up there? Otherwise, I will see all of your beautiful places on Tuesday, but I'll see us for our special lesson next week, Saturday. I hope you have a lovely rest of weekend, and I will see you guys on Tuesday for our functions lesson. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Have a good Saturday evening. Bye, everyone. Okay, let me get these names. Okay, let's see. So, um, Georgia, when it says the question, uh, at the beginning, the question will say um, factorize or simplify, which is helpful. And when it comes to equations, generally it's a factorized situation when it's fractions, when fractions are involved, it'll be some kind of equation. Um, let me save this. Notes, names, one. And who else is missing? Bye, everyone. I hope you have a lovely evening.